Coño, sube eso hasta arriba, vamos, dale duro. Yo salgo a la calle buscando mi gente cuando de repente todos los delincuentes que queden en mi vida, buena mala suerte que son mi familia, no importa la sangre. Jesús y agua en vino. Welcome back to Ant's Boxing Channel. In this video, we're going to do a prediction for Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. I also got a couple clips I want to show you guys to support my reasonings. Now, let's begin. Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney, to me, is a very difficult fight to predict. Extremely difficult. For the simple reason that I could see this fight ending any way possible. I could see Ryan Garcia winning by decision. I could see Ryan Garcia winning by KO. I could see Haney winning by decision. I could see Haney winning by stoppage. I could even see a draw. Now, some of those might sound crazy, but stick to the end of this video and you're going to find out just how realistic it really is. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about their strengths. We, uh, a lot of us already know Devin Haney is just the more skilled fighter, the more technical fighter, the more elusive, boxing savvy fighter, higher IQ fighter, right? Got the better footwork. Ryan Garcia on the other hand is the bully. He's more of the aggressor. He got the power, he got the speed, he got the ferocity, you know what I mean? He got the one punch knockout power. He got that grit, that heart. We seen Ryan Garcia when he got dropped by Luke Campbell and how he got up and stopped him. On the other hand, we've seen Devin Haney hurt a couple times and he'll resort to running around the ring or clinching. He's a survivor. Not taking no shots, just is what it is. Now, both of these guys have the tools to exploit the other one. See, with Ryan Garcia, he has very slow feet and very poorly educated feet. They're like fifth grade feet in boxing. Devin Haney has much more sophisticated feet. Devin Haney's footwork is like, it's like, 10th grade, you know what I mean? Like 11, like, like I'll say like, like 10th, 11th grade, like he could, you know what I mean? He's almost about to graduate, you feel me? Devin Haney is just, he's better at positioning himself, controlling distance, um, really all due to the footwork and upper body movement. Ryan Garcia has terrible upper body movement, keeps his head on the island, chin up, and very slow feet. With that being said, Devin Haney's elusiveness and mobility can cause issues for Ryan Garcia a lot. It, he could win the fight just based off that because Ryan Garcia, like most low-level sluggers, they need to be plotted. They can't punch while moving, so they need to be plotted so that they can really let their punches rip. Ryan don't know how to punch off movement. Devin Haney could capitalize off that and exploit that and cruise off to a smooth win. Now, what are the chances of that? They're not as high as you may think because Devin Haney is also flawed. Devin Haney doesn't have the greatest defense. Devin Haney has this thing that I don't like when I see where he keeps his power hand. He keeps his hand down here and, and, and then he tries to move up. Sometimes when Haney's in range, I would like to see him with his hands more up here, especially against a fighter like Ryan Garcia, who has a killer check hook. So Haney's holes in his defense definitely make it so that Ryan Garcia can present trouble to Devin Haney as well. Ryan Garcia's aggression and combination punching can present trouble to Haney. Haney hasn't faced a fighter with the dimensions of a Ryan Garcia since um, Jorge Linares. That was the last time he fought somebody with somewhere around that height and reach and speed, but he didn't have the power that Ryan has and he didn't have the ferocity that Ryan has. Now, Devin Haney has gotten a lot of critique because Devin Haney has no power, right? But we know that Devin Haney was unhealthily making 135 he wasn't his full self at 135 because he was weight draining himself to make weight now at 140 he fought regis progray regis progray is somebody with a proven chin we know regis got a chin and haney was able to hurt him like two or three times i'm talking hurt him you could tell he staggered him and like like oh snap like we just was like boom on top of that he dropped him so there's a big question mark as far as haney's power Haney may have a, have more power than he's been credited to have at 135, at 140, now that he's healthier. I saw signs of that when he faced Regis Progray. Still remains to be fully seen to where we could really stamp it that, okay, Haney got some pop, for real. But, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. We saw what he did with Regis, and Regis is chin-tested. Now, Ryan Garcia hasn't really been chin-checked like that. Ryan Garcia has the stigma behind him of that he's a quitter because when he got caught by that body shot by Tank, he took a knee and he didn't get back up. And a lot of people felt like he should have and could have gotten back up. How did Tank catch Ryan with that body shot? Tank got low. Tank got low. 
and he stood on the inside. And when Ryan threw his punch off, Tank just punched him between that shot. Now, Tank has the IQ and the timing to do these things, as well as the power to have the impact that it had. Haney can't replicate that style. So a lot of people like to say, oh, we've already seen how you lost. So I know how to, how you, how, how to beat you because I already saw you lost. Well, it's tricky because Tank's attributes are very different from Haney's. His IQ, his power... His athleticism and explosion is different, you know? On top of that, his size. If you go back and you watch Ryan versus Tank, there was a lot of times where Ryan's check hook, Tank was just, he was just too small. He was so short. And on top of that, he fought even shorter, ducking so low. Ryan, Haney can't do that. Haney will get clipped by check hooks if he tries to fight small on the inside. He will get clipped by him. He can't get away with it the way Tank did. So as far as anybody who believes that Tank laid down the blueprint to beat Ryan. He gave you one way to beat Ryan, but you got to look at stylistically how he did that. It don't fit a fighter like Haney. He's not going to be able to replicate that. So Haney's going to really have to outbox Ryan. He could do that, but Haney has a couple holes in his defense. Haney is hittable. Haney does get hit. If you look at his last couple fights, Haney is bringing the fight. Haney isn't just boxing off of movement and just trying to be elusive and all that. Haney is standing in front of people when he's fighting. That's dangerous against Ryan Garcia. He could very much get clipped. He could very much get hurt doing that. Now, Ryan Garcia is flat-footed. Haney still does move, and Haney still still is elusive. And, um, you know, he boxes. He uses his footwork and uses the ring to create space and all that stuff. It's not going to be easy for Ryan, but it's not going to be easy for Devin either. Unless Devin proves to us that he really has that power. Devin Haney's power right now is an X factor because we don't know how real it is. Ryan Garcia definitely don't respect it. He's looking confident as heck the way he's talking. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way he's talking is that like he's just going to walk right through Devin Haney's punches. It remains to be seen how real Devin Haney's power is. But it also remains to be seen how real Ryan Garcia's heart and will is. We saw one quit. We've seen one get buzzed and start hugging and clinching. Know what I mean? Like I said, this fight is very hard to call because I could see it going either way. I really could. Um, there's certain punches that Ryan isn't hard to hit. A lot of the people that Ryan has faced are smaller than him. Much tank, much smaller than him. And he, that went how it went. Um, Oscar Duarte was smaller than him. Um, Emmanuel Tago was much smaller than him. Javier Fortuna, much smaller than him. He hasn't fought somebody that dimension since Luke Campbell that's somewhat around his size. And Luke Campbell was a southpaw with not that much power, very technical, you know? Not as elusive or um not as elusive or technical as Devin Haney. I'm say skillful, because he Luke Campbell is actually very technical. But he I, I would I wouldn't say he's as skillful as Devin Haney. The IQ, the footwork. It's gonna be a very interesting matchup. I could see it going either way. So because I could see it going either way. How I'm going to do this is by probability. What's the chance that I see occurring the most, right? First, I would see the biggest chance that I, the biggest outcome I see happening in this fight is Devin Haney by decision. That's the biggest outcome I see. I think his boxing ability, his IQ, his ability to survive if he gets hurt, I think he could, I think overall that seems what most likely will happen over everything else secondly and this might shock you a draw secondly a draw because i could see this fight going something similar like tyson fury versus deontay wilder the first one where fury was able to outbox wilder that being haney outboxing ryan but wilder was able to drop fury enough and sneak in a couple rounds to where he got a draw I could see that being Ryan. Able to sneak, steal a couple rounds here and there and drop in Haney enough times to get a draw. So I would say my lead choice, I would have to say Haney by decision. If not, I feel it'll be a draw. After that, I would say probably Ryan by stoppage or knockout because I could see Ryan clipping Haney with a check hook, with a straight right hand. Haney's also susceptible to right hands. And Ryan has a good right hand and he's been practicing it more. He threw it a lot when he faced Oscar Duarte. Clearly, that's something he's been working on. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video, which I predict will be the outcome of this fight. But that's it for Ann's Boxing Channel. I'm out. Yo salgo a la calle buscando mi gente Cuando de repente todos los delincuentes Que queden en mi vida Buena mala suerte que son mi familia No importa la sangre Jesús y su agua en vida